Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm going to be giving you What If Naruto Became the Greatest Puppeteer? Part 5. Remember to get this one to 300 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform. And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto Unlock a Strange Power. And I enjoyed that guys over an anime making too. And also, remember if you're new and this is the first time you hear my voice and you guys enjoy the videos on both anime making and anime making too. Do me a favor and go ahead and click that red subscribe button guys and thank you for all of your help and your support and for supporting the channel. Because without you guys, you are the backbone of this channel so thank you all guys. So remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new I'll be replaying and talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what is to be in this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last time we left off, Naruto made it back to the tower, as he was, well, he was a bit scared not knowing what to do, as he ended up getting his own double room, as he placed soccer and kin body down, he had to quickly seal them away, as he felt nauseous. It was then that he went into a kind of a state, where he started to work on kin body, turning her into a fully operational puppet. He didn't really modify Sakura's body because he was planning to do something. Something that wouldn't let him get caught. So for the remaining time, Naruto worked on Kane's body, throwing up a bunch of time. This was his first time doing something this grotesque and it was really disturbing for him. But his body was moving on its own, creating life, creating puppet. As the time then came to an end, as the group made their way as Kakashi, noticed Sakura looked rather, well, tired. As she asked if she could sleep for the remaining time until her name was called. As Naruto was distraught in his voice, so it was sound like Sakura, and her head was lowered so Kakashi couldn't tell the difference. The matches went on, as Naruto was called to face off against Tintin. She stood no chance as Naruto used Kin. Kin quickly caught Tintin, and Naruto told her to give up. As he walked over towards her, she collapsed because of the poison as he gave her the antidote. Conqueror was shocked as he couldn't believe what the hell was going on. How did uh, Konoha Shinobi know puppeteering? As with that Naruto simply ignored him and made his way. The rest of the matches went on as Naruto used his perfect chance while Sakura faced off against Inu as he was controlling her. He made Sakura slip on a shuriken that Tintin left down there after a barrage of shurikens. As Kuna is at Inu had thrown, the three of them pierced into Sakura. Inu couldn't believe it. What did she just do? She she killed her best friend as the medic stretched over Sakura. Naruto was keeping her heart pumping by using his threats. So, from what they could tell, she just died. So yeah, Naruto got away scot-free. As the rest of the matches went off, as Naruto was scheduled to fight Conqueror in the finals, Kakashi wasn't one to, well, deal with emotions, but he told Naruto if he ever needed to talk, he knew where to find him. As Naruto told him that he would be fine on his own because there's a lot of things that only he can do, as he would need a sensei for that. As Kakashi understood as he went to train Sasuke, who hadn't said anything after Sakura's death, as Ino was shaken up as well, she wasn't even there. She completely broke down. Naruto was also called to the office as Ibiki was in there furious about Naruto knowing puppeteering. But Sarto was just laid back because Naruto did nothing wrong. As he was dismissed after that, as Naruto went to find Hinata, he found that he could use Kin's body and also use Chakra and ability through her. Her Chakra system was still connected as Hinata was shocked when she saw that. As Naruto practiced with her for the entire day, Improving her skills and also learn a way to fight against the Jayugan style of the Hayugas. As Hinata was surprised when she was left completely unable to move. Naruto told her to remove her shirt because he wanted to put the antidote on her but she passed out. After hearing that as Naruto decided to went home, he had a lot to do in this month of training. A kid didn't spray water on him as he took the hose from the kid and placed his finger over the hole. Leaving a small part open as more pressure came from the hose. 
Naruto was instantly inspired, something smashing right into his brain as he quickly rushed home. He had a lot to do. So yeah guys, that was basically that's where we left off. You guys can switch across to the page and check it out for yourself. So just to begin this new episode. The rain didn't seem to bother anyone in the stadium as it poured on the ground relentlessly. The general atmosphere was uh, eager of excitement as everyone was waiting for the show to start that they came to see. Everyone had come for this. From shinobis to merchants to nobles to jennings to kagis as all of them was bustling and chatting in the busy stands. Whether they were here to witness Ninja 5 for better entertainment or who they were going to hire in the future, it didn't matter. They all came for a good show so something that the weather wouldn't ruin that. Meanwhile, Naruto was withdrawn into his grey jacket more than usual. The way he used it required to be opening a chest and he was getting a rather draft at the front which was annoying him a bit but he looked forward. As he looked toward the stadium it was a large arena, trees over to one side and a stream over to another. But it was just a battlefield. The two people stepping up to meet each other wasn't noticing that though as they were just too busy ready to fight. Naruto was surprised that he arrived after Kakashi and Sasuke. Apparently Sakura's death had rattled Kakashi more than he thought and he was taking things more seriously. As Naruto wondered what that said for Sasuke's training over the last month. As he would have to see before he made any judgments. Hirson draw deep puff from his pipe as he blew out smoke. As he narrowed his eyes towards a hooded blonde down in the box below. You know that habit is going to kill you one day sensei. A familiar voice behind yours and said. Ah Jiraiya, I would be the luckiest shinobi in the world if I was to fall to such a normal cause. As he turned his head slightly to look at Jiraiya lean against the railing. Anyway, it's not a job to inform me of all the little things that will shorten my life. Two of them chuckled a bit as shinobi is about 40. They were already past shinobi life expectancy. Yeah, well I ain't putting on a blonde wig and play nurse for you sensei, said Jiraiya. This isn't itchy itchy you know. Sarutobi noticed that Jiraiya didn't seem well, up to beat, it's his usual persona, his act was just seeming down a bit. An interesting comparison from you my boy, said Hirson. So how have you been? I heard you've been back in the village for a while now. Jiraiya nodded, already knowing what the online question was. Well, said Hirson. Nothing, Jiraiya said in an irritated tone. I couldn't catch a kid anywhere. Apparently he spent more time in the apartment and even when I camp outside he doesn't even come out. It seems like he's a bigger hermit than I am. Or maybe he has some other way of leaving that place, Jiraiya said. And why didn't you just knock on his door, asked Hirson. I did, a few times. I even broke in at one point. And the kid was asleep. And it was only 1 o'clock in the midday. He has weirder sleeping habits than most of I met. I didn't snoop around much, said Jerry after seeing the look Hirson was giving him. Puppets, Sensei. Really? I had nothing to do with it, I assure you. In fact, it seemed to be partly Kakashi's fault. I believe that he was trying to inspire Naruto doing a trying time. However, Naruto seemed to lash onto the idea of Puppeteer quite quickly. I can't imagine why, said Hirson. Well, Jerry understood and Hirson understood as well. A lonely kid, having the chance to build friends that could stay with him. Well, who wouldn't? So, you decided to stick around then, asked Hirson. As it wasn't common for Jerry to stay in the village more than a week. Well, I figure if I couldn't train the kid, might as well come and watch what he can do, you know? Hirson simply nodded. Shame, I thought you might have some lingering ideas of protecting me. I was almost touched, he said. Yeah, because you of all people need to be protected, since he said Jerry. As the sand group arrived in the Kage's box, I'm not as young as I used to be, Jerry, Hirson whispered. As he turned towards his new. Yes. Ah, Kazekage Dano. It's a pleasure to see you. Meanwhile, Sasuke was standing in the arena floor waiting, arms crossed impatiently. Across from him, his opponent had on a grin, bouncing as he was waiting for the fight to begin. As Sasuke was warned by Kakashi not to underestimate Lee at any cost. Apparently anyone able to keep up with Guy's insane dream was someone to watch out for. Sasuke decided to take the advice and go all out from the start. He smirked as he saw the proctor walk over. Lee wouldn't even know what hit him. The arm came down to begin as the proctor jumped away. Boat boys dashed forward as the people started to cheer them on. There was only a brief pause as both of them clashed their legs together violently. Sasuke was surprised he was not winning. Then he swung his leg around and launched a kick towards Lee, unprotected temple. But Lee brought up his arm in a quick motion blocking it. Their eyes met again as Sasuke's eyes narrowed while Lee was shining with determination. Then to most of the audience he vanished. 
clashes could be heard. A few of the older ninjas look on in interest, interesting and impressed that these Jennings could reach this kind of speed. They were in for a surprise and both boys separated once again, as the both of them had on smirk. It is obviously, at this level we're too evenly matched Sasuke. I am thankful that guy since he allowed me this honor before the match began. As Lee was holding out two training weights to either side of his body, when he dropped them, the ground vibrate under the weight. I agree, said Sasuke with a smirk, not even bothered by the enormous weight Lee had just shed. As he activated his two totem Sharingan and looked over at Lee, then let us pit our flames of youth against one another until only one of us can stand. Lee shouted. A moment later, his entire body simply vanished. Sasuke, with his Sharingan active, could easily make out Lee with his haze of speed. Sparring with Kakashi, he could track fast movements and not to mention take heavy blows like the one that Lee just landed on him. While speed and strength was on Lee's side, reaction and planning was on Sasuke's. It seems that Lee was not used to his intense and sudden burst of speed. His attack became sloppy and less coordinated. With the sharing and predictabilities, Sasuke was able to keep up with Lee. As Sasuke was staying in the same place, thinking about his battle strategy here. As Lee didn't even notice what Sasuke was doing, just standing right there, dodging and maneuvering all around. But he was not moving from that spot. He was just going around that circle. When the trap was finally set and off. Steel wires burst on the ground where Sasuke laid him. Lee was unprepared. Lee was thrown back violently into a tree as the wires wrapped around his stomach, his arms pinned to his side. As Sasuke transferred the wires to his teeth as he went through one side before breathing out a large fire as they rushed down the steel wires. As Lee eyes widened before the tree was turned to a makeshift bonfire, a gas came from the crowd at the brutal end of the fight. But Sasuke knew what he was doing. As he knew when to cut off his technique any longer, Lee would have might been fatally wounded. But for this, he would be in the hospital for a week or two. But then again, Kakashi told him that Little could keep Guy down. So he expected the same from Lee. But suddenly, the flames were blown away violently, causing Sasuke to release the wires in his mouth. Fifth gate. As Lee's eyes were white, his skin was red. As the Jonids were surprised, recognizing what Lee had done. As Sasuke didn't understand, only by exertion alone, Lee has blown away his flames, leaving his body barely singed. What came next was pain, unbelievable, unending pain all over Sasuke's body. Lee was there one moment and then he wasn't. As Lee then launched a devastating kick at Sasuke's chin that knocked him straight up in the air. As Lee appeared right above him, Sasuke's shotgun was fast but his body was not so fast. As Lee like came down on him once again, Sasuke world exploded into pure agonizing pain. Sasuke was bounced around in the air by genuine shock waves as Lee kept on reappearing and knocking Sasuke all around in a ball in the air until Lee launched a devastating key into Sasuke's gut. Sasuke winced and coughed up blood as he was sent sailing. Boom, he landed hard. As Lee landed right in front of him, all at once the power around Lee's body vanished. The aura and his skin returning back to normal as his eyes regained their pupil, whatever he had did. His body was in excruciating pain. To Lee's shock, Sasuke slowly digged himself out of the crater that he was in. As Sasuke pulled himself up, Lee took a step forward to stop him but his legs gave out as he collapsed on his knees. As Sasuke's eyes, Lee saw the Sharingan fading. As Sasuke's eyes returned back black before, he lost consciousness and collapsed down. Lee's determination and will caused him to stay up 5 seconds longer before he too collapsed as well. An explosion of cheers went on as Naruto waited for the deafening cheers to die down. Naruto was impressed that Sasuke could hold out that long against a faster and stronger opponent as he could see that Lee was very impressive when it comes to Taijutsu and Lee was able to overcome the Sharingan with brute force. A few moments later in a hush overcome the crowds, the next two opponents waiting to go down the field as Neji made his way down to the field. As Hinata slowly made her way, she passed by Naruto she didn't expect him to do anything, but she felt a pat on her back. Good luck. All of her nerves and jitters faded away quickly as a small smile came on her face. She turned and gave him a smile she quickly made her way down, determination set all over her face. Meanwhile, in the Kage's boot, quite the impressive Jennings you got there Pokage Dano, said the Kazkagi, as they watch the young Uchiha being carried out of the arena in a stretcher. Quite the shame about the Uchiha boy though, I was hoping to have my guard challenge him at some point, but he's out. 
Now I fear the exams will become quite boring for no one to oppose him. Sir Tober is a singer I run as he puffed on his pipe. You show a great deal of confidence in your son Kazakagi Dano, so Garrison. However, you may be surprised at the kind of resistance Konoha can put up against any show of force. Because Kazakagi just looked down towards the two Hayuka. We shall see, won't we, he said before looking over towards Gara. Meanwhile, I am surprised you were able to make it down the stairs, Inata Sama, Neji said, putting sarcastic on her suffix. Only she and the proctor could hear him as he kept his voice down. All the while he kept his features neutral and smooth. I am perfectly capable of facing you, Neji Nisan said Hinata, don't look down on me, as she had a rather determined way of her tone that most have heard before. I have to prove to you and my family that I am able to stand on both feet. You will see, she says, both of them took their senses, almost identical. I do see, Hinata-sama, said Neji. I see a weak little girl trying to act strong, only having hollowed ideas. His lip twitched down to a smirk as he saw the shock in his cousin's eyes. Don't think I don't know about your so-called plan to rejoin the Hayuga, to rejoin the houses. It will never happen. Fate has already determined our path in this world. It is merely our job to walk them. I see, said Hinata. I may not understand your pain, but I see it. Over the last month, I was taught something very important. That sometimes, words will only go so far. Without even a hand sign, her beak can activate it. I will have to show you my resolve, she said. Before Nitch could get a word in, the proctor sliced his hand down, beginning the match. As the crowd was silent, as the two Hayugas didn't move a muscle, both their dojutsu was activated, staring, searching, waiting. It was Nitch that moved first. Deciding with his superiority speed, there was little he not I can do against him. He dashed out his arm, lashing out at speed, almost matching Lee's kick from earlier. As he was aiming towards the inner collarbone, but she slapped his hand away. The both of them engaged a beautiful back and front strike. Faint bursts of chakra escaped their hands with every strike. As their eyes became narrow further and further, neither seemed to get an advantage over the other. While Neji seemed faster, he never was just flowing around his attacks. The both of them separated. What is this, said Neji? Those are not the correct form for the Jayugan. What have you done? Do you think all that I have learned over this month was simple word of advisement? Neji Nisan, she said. I learned that Jayugan is limited when he came to defend it against her own attacks. Her stance then shifted just a bit. It is rigid, divine and stiff. As you can already see, the more flowing motion is the best way to defend herself. It is a weakling's attempt of overcoming obstacles. Too larger to move, said Neji. Just because you have slightly changed your move, that doesn't mean you will beat me. You won't even land a single strike on my body, he said. The Hayugas need to move forward or we will stand still. It doesn't matter because you're in my field of definition, he said, as she shifted into a stance. A uh, few members of the main house were surprised as they gasped what they saw. Only because you're in mine as well, said Hinata. Her stance shifting as well. Two palms, the both of them said, they launched forward. Four palms. Eight palms! As they were moving so fast it was hard to tell whose hands was whose. Sixteen palms the both of them shouted as their voice lost their secrecy as Hinata fell behind in superior speed. Thirty-two palms! Hinata now looking to be struggling greatly against her cause of movements. She was slowing down while he was only going faster. Sixty-four palms! Hinata couldn't do it halfway through as Neji striked her. Her body was thrown back violently and crushed on the ground. As she slowly picked herself up. Her arm was all red all over, where she had sacrificed her arm to take the blunt of the attack a minute ago. As her point and her arm was closed, and Neji was dashing forward, giving her no chance. Do you see now, no matter how much we struggle or complain, fate will always guide us in our path. As he glared down at her, as Hinata simply stared back at him. I also believe that we were a slave to our fate, that I was doomed to be weak forever, to have my dream of uniting the clan being taken away by my very sister who I love so much becoming clan head instead of me. I thought it would be inevitable that I would be branded with a seal also to have my dream taken away forever as she struggled to get back to her feet. But I can't believe that anymore, not after watching him struggle through his entire life. And yet still, after all the hardship he just spit right in fate's face. Oh really? And how do you intend to go about defying fate in such a way? With this pitiful trap you managed to set up, he motioned his hands around him as he looked at a shock in Hinata's eyes. What? You didn't think I noticed you laying them? As he looked at a small mechanism hidden in the dust. Pitiful to resort to such cheap tricks. I want you to activate it, he says. He took a step back. Then you will understand how futile this is, that you have no chance. But he noticed a look flash through Hinata's eyes at that moment. 
There is no such thing as cheap trick for shinobis. I learned that this month as well. As she tugged back with her finger, revealing a wire that was wrapped around it. The sound of a mechanism could be heard as all at once. Seal and array spread out on the ground. With a poof of smoke, ninja wires spiraled everywhere around Neji, trying to wrap them up. But Neji started to twist his body. The members of the Hayuga gasped when they saw what he did. Rotation! But he didn't know that he was capable of doing this as Naruto told her what Neji was spending the month perfecting. She might not approve of his spy nature but Naruto was like that, not leaving anything a chance. All of the wires were blown away. However, that was not the purpose of a chop. That was simply to force Neji to perform the rotation. It was a simple rule to expose the only weakness that Neji had that she could exploit. While it was true that he was a genius, learning technique from sight, that took years for main branch member to learn. The rotation was such a powerful and vertilized technique that only top Hayuga members learned into their joining and joining. That is why the weakness did not affect them so much. They had the necessary time to accommodate it. But Neji didn't. In that single moment when the user started to slow down the barrier completely, leaving them completely vulnerable, the glow fade that seemed to lash out aimed for Neji's chest. His eyes widened as he tried to stop it, but the momentum of his pain had taken him too far. But for whatever reason, Neji's eyes narrowed even further as he slapped away her hand. That was her only chance left. Five quick hits and Hinata body fell down to the ground as a smile was on her face. Neji looked down at her. Something you you hesitated as the crowd around him burst into applause and cheers. He shouldn't have been able to slap her hand away but he hesitated. Why? Why he asked as he looked down at her. Hinata didn't move she just looked up in the sky with a smile. Because I am the Hayuga heiress. As much as I hate quoting dad, I have to start acting like it eventually. This is how I chose to do so. As a tear escaped her eye, a bit of pain escaped me from her body, from the attack that Neji hit her with. You're a family, and family shouldn't fight. It's too important. Neji scowled. Don't look down on me like that, he said. As rage started building inside of him, she hesitated on purpose not to hit him. His body started to move on autopilot as his hands started to glow with chakra. The proctor tried to quickly make his way but Neji was already near to her as he lashed out right towards her heart. The crowd all went silent as they watched. Hinata's eyes went wide as pain rushed through her body, blood almost reaching her ears. It was almost like a steady beat, slowing down as Neji attempted to murder Hinata, attempted. He almost would have, except Three Jonies were already upon him, stopping him before he could actually deliver the final blow. As the medics were called immediately to take Hinata away, Team 8 was furious for Neji's blood for trying to kill Hinata like that after she was already down. The Hayuga clan watched on stoically, their perfect mass not showing anything as they seeded in silence. But for Naruto, he never really had family so he never really understand why someone wanted to kill their cousin. Usually he wouldn't care but he didn't know why his grip tightened around the pole that he was holding on. Hinata, she was just a tool to him, right? She was just a chess piece for him to use whenever he wanted. And slowly her use was dwindling because he was getting a better work on how to control his network. And he was getting used to the steady stream of information he could handle himself. Hinata would soon become a non-player at all. So why was he so angry as Neji was escorted from the arena? Flashback. Naruto-kun said Hinata. As the both of them were in the training field, as Kane, she was leaning up against a tree. Yes, said Naruto. Why are you helping me, she asked. As she was looking down the grass, her body just went through an intense workout from Naruto Puppet. What do you mean, said Naruto. Well, um, as she poked her fingers together, Hinata said Naruto, you did me a real favor by helping me with this project, even though you didn't have to. So, I'm returning the favor. That's what friends do, right? Hinata had snapped up hearing that. Friends? Sure. We are friends, right? said Naruto. As a hand appeared right in front of her. She looked at it. Before she slowly reached up and grabbed the hand. As she looked up. She was startled as she looked at the puppet. Blank eyes. She never noticed Naruto substitute himself. Never let her guard down, Hinata, Naruto said. As his laughter could be heard all over. As she frowned. End of flashback. It was all acting, right? Words that he used. Things like friends, 
just to get her to trust him. Oi, Faker! That was another thing that was irritating him for this month. We're up. It's time that I show you what real puppeteer look like. Conker was smirking as he hopped the railing down to the arena. As Nurkin heard his eyes but he didn't say anything. Clearly, he has been a bit too emotional, invested a bit lately. As he intended to squash that now, he decided to take the stairs, walking at a rather slow pace, making his opponent wait a while. As he passed by Gara, he felt something strange. Inu had not shown up yet, still probably reeling from what happened at the preliminaries. If she was smart, she wouldn't show up at all. But unfortunately, that also meant if he won this match, Gara would be his next opponent. He didn't know why, but he felt excited. The thrill made it more exhilarating. Meanwhile, well, that was certainly an interesting development. What do you say, Hokagidano? Asked Kazakagi. Children and their scrubbers. I'm afraid they're only advanced by Shinobi training. Said Hirzen, masking the betrayal and hurt he felt, as he could almost see the frustration seated right inside Neji. That whole affair with Kumo and the Hayuga scarred him a lot. It was a regrettable but necessary action at the time, but that didn't ease the aching Hirzen heart anyway. So my son is finally up then. I think this should prove to be an interesting match, don't you think Hokagidano? Hirzen simply smiled. Ah uh, yes, we are privileged to see two similar arcs, said Hirzen. One with a history, and one that has just developed and started to grow. We by two, skilled opponents. You speak like the both of them are equal, said the Kazakagi. You don't really believe a young upstart will be able to capture the skill, or the art, of a puppeteer, right? That a real puppeteer possesses, or puppeteer core has the experience. No, new young Jenin would be able to be that advanced. To catch any one of them. Maybe you're correct, sometimes experience does trump natural talents in person. In fact, sometimes I believe that would be the case. However, Naruto is an unpredictable shinobi, which you will soon find out. The Kazakai sat back as Naruto walked out. A pissed off look was on Conqueror's face as Naruto took his long while to make it down here. Well, for the past month he has been doing nothing but hard work. He even managed to break into the Haiga compound, which was something not easy to do. To get information on all his opponents, but still. So, to enjoy this small satisfaction by looking at Conqueror's face, well, it was the least he could do, right? So, are you ready to get a lesson on actual puppeteering? Conqueror said that smirk. As Naruto wasn't even paying attention, before he turned, um, did you say something? Somewhere in the crowd, Kakashi felt a hint of pride swelling his chest. Sorry, I thought you were talking to seven year old me. He would have been itching to learn. This is a 13 year old Naruto, he has already learned all, and he's going to use that knowledge to kick your ass, by proxy. For a puppeteer, Conqueror really didn't have a great grip on his emotions, maybe they didn't toss it in the sand or something. Then again, the guard kid had a pretty good handle of it. You will be talked out of the other side of your mouth and it's over, kid said Conqueror. As he was a stroll right on his belt, as Naruto noticed that the bundle wasn't on his back anymore, perhaps he finally learned the art of sealing Fuinjutsu. The proctor raised his hand as a sign spread over the crowd before lowering it as he jumped away. Both puppeteers threw their scroll up as smoke enveloped the area. By the time it was clear, Conqueror was hidden on a small, behind a small rock formation behind the trees. He knew that the trees would be too obvious so he was hidden by his rock. He expected Nurtu to be hiding in the trees to use his puppet but Nurtu did not move, not even an inch. Oh, are we playing hide and seek now? Nurtu said playfully. I thought you wanted to fight Nurtu said as Remia came the running protectively. Or do you lack faith in your ability not to want to settle this through real skills? As Conqueror watched the odd puppet, it was different from the one he used before. He certainly wasn't expecting something that looked so finely crafted. He forced himself not to rise to the taunts. He just wanted to get into relief his location. As Karasu was hiding in the trees, spring to life and speed through them going towards Naruto. As Naruto eyes narrowed at the three head construct, his own fingers started moving a blur. As Karasu moved into attack, Firing off a barrage of Saint Bonds. As Remia easily interjecting herself between the weapons, batting away any of the weapons that would have come close to even touching Naruto. Once that was over, Remia swing around as a section in her body opened up as Kunai's pour out of it. As Karasu proved quite maneuverable though, backing off instantly. But Conqueror was caught off guard and Kunai's suddenly started to explode for no reason. Some were even close to hitting Karasu when they blew up. As Conqueror noticed that the exploding kunais were blowing away the other ones, as one of them pierced the rock that he was hiding behind. He smirked, well, 
he's got some tricks. But he isn't the only one, as Caruso swooped down towards the position once again. Instead of a weapon though, the mouth opened wide and fired out a ball. Raimi tried to bat it away with her tail, but the moment she touched it, it burst, and a purple mist spread all over. Concord Green, there was a large amount of dosing in that to drop a Jody. You know, you're quite stupid, said Naruto, trying to fight a puppeteer with poisons. Huh. As Conquer clenched his fist when the smoke blew away, the see Naruto standing with her cloth wrapped around his mouth. He was just standing there. Out to this puppet, just standing there. This is not the art of a puppeteer. You were supposed to be on the defense. Your puppet should be the one taking on the offense, but you. He was just standing there with this strange puppet wrapped around him. Blades exploded from Kurosawa's arms as he turned the buzz saw as he zipped through the air coming down towards Naruto as Remia was very tough. So, even the blades, as her tail smashed against it, they couldn't tear it apart. Sparks flew to the air as he deflected the attack with her tails and her fingers. As Naruto stood in the center of all the chaos with Remia around him, his fingers moving under his sleeve as Konku was hiding watching him. As Naruto's finger twitched in a different way, Remia head shot forward towards Kurosu. Before Conquer could even blink, two of his puppet's arm was sealed up in a thick substance that dried very quickly. Hmm, I was saving that for your brother. No, the surprise is gone, said Naruto. As Karusu retreated back into the woods, he made Karusu do a long whoop around the arena as he brought it back to the position. I wouldn't try to remove that. It's the same thing I used to strengthen my puppet's skin. It was goddamn near incredibly hard to remove under these situations as Naruto had tried. It only stayed liquid under some, well, conditions. And once it came in contact with air, it became hard like stone. Well, harder. Originally, he wanted to use it to lock up Gara's stand into clumps, so the boy could not use it. As Konkuro had Karasu go all around, a spear came from Karasu's mouth. It shot towards Naruto with incredible speed. As Karasu was missing, the two clogged up limbs entirely, going for Naruto's blind side as the thing pierced Naruto right through his leg, but there was no pain, no scream or anything, as Naruto had substituted with Remia, as Konkuro cursed as he realized why Naruto was so close, he could substitute so quickly, and no effect happened to him, it would be impossible to detect the way they were close to each other, but now, Karasu was trapped, as Remia gripped him, as her face leaned down to him, as Karasu was struck, Sealing up one of his other arms, sealing one of his legs as well. As Ramia chased after Karasu, who was incredibly slow right now. Finally, said Konkuro, as Ramia had left Naruto, as he was unprotected right now, going after Karasu. The groan behind Naruto suddenly bursts open, revealing a next puppet similar to Karasu. Naruto eyes widened before the puppet completely grabbed him and locked him inside. The thing shut with some locking mechanism. As silent ran over the stadium, the newly freed leg and arm came from Caruso as each of them had spikes attached to them. As the spikes made their way, slash, everyone was just silent as nothing could be heard until Konkuro spoke, you were no match for Caruso and Kurohari as he was breathing a little heavier from the exertion, controlling two puppets put on his body. This is what it means to be a puppeteer you faker. Not just controlling one, but having an army of puppets at your fingertips. But he did not notice something that Raymia did not fall to the ground in a slump like she should have. And where was the blood that was leaking from the puppet's body? There was none. Huh. I think I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, okay? Conqueror froze at that voice. How? That was impossible. As he turned to see Nurta sitting on a branch above him. Just resting back and looking down at him. As Nurta was eating a dango. I hope you don't mind the dango. I... Have a weird sleeping schedule, and I didn't get breakfast this morning. As he quickly twitched his fingers, called back his puppet. But the moment he turned, his heart nearly jumped right out of his chest as he saw the glassy eyes of a raccoon. As she stared at him, she wrapped him up quickly with all of her arms. What? What is this thing? He said. As the puppet mouth unhinged and opened up in a rather large manner, as acid dripped from her mouth, hitting the rock and going right into it. Oh, Arakon? Oh, don't worry about her. She has a very gentle touch. Konkuro, never been more terrified than he was right now. Considering who was his brother, that was impossible, but he was. As the puppet was looking at him so, with those eyes, those lifeless hollow eyes, it just 
It scared him to no end. You know, say Naruto, as Rania, came over. You shouldn't be judging who was able to control multiple puppets and who can't. As Naruto Pinky Twitch, as Conqueror Puppet does open up, as a wooden, normal human sized puppet came out of it. And the last time I checked, three was more than two, Naruto said. Now, go to sleep. As Arakun swallowed Conqueror, screams could be heard. As everyone wondered, did, did he kill him? Well, said Naruto as he looked over at Jinma. Oh, right, Jinma said, winner of the third match, Uzumaki Naruto. As Naruto had Arakun regurgitate Conqueror back up, as clapping started to cheer, especially from the foreign visitors. Conqueror simply lay there, but it didn't last for long though. It wore off after a few seconds. How he acts. You were out thought. It happens all the time. Deal with it. As Naruto had won, the sand was going to be very annoyed. Did it concern him? No, not really. You. You controlled three pups at the same time, said Conqueror. He had every right to be shocked. Naruto was a year younger than him, and yet he was more advanced in the art that he was supposed to know nothing about. How? Seeing that in the stand, your skills as a puppeteer was measured by the amount of puppies you can control, and the puppet complexity, and from what he has seen, those puppets, Arakun, the thing just eat him. If it helps, Naruto says, he looked over towards Dami, who was limping over. This one doesn't count. The poor thing had taken a beating inside of Conqueror's trap. He was really glad it wasn't him, well, it was Naruto in the first place because since the match began, it was Dami here the entire time. The real Naruto was hiding in the woods, watching Conqueror the entire time, seeing what he was capable of. So, you built all these puppets yourself, huh? said Conqueror. You mean to say you didn't, Naruto asked. As Conqueror tried to get up but he fall, he tried once more but this time, Naruto grabbed onto his hand helping him. As many were confused why Naruto was helping him. Well, I assembled them, said Conqueror, as he was confused as well. He tried to regain his balance on his own. But they're both standard puppets built by Sasori. They're both two type of puppets that everyone start out first in the core with. As Naruto just got some information, the puppets that Conqueror had, they were built by Sasori himself. Well then, said Naruto, that's your problem. How do you expect to win the puppet that you don't even know? I understand everything about my puppets because I was one who breathed life into them. Every mistake I make is carved into my skin and every success is carved into theirs. Puppeteer isn't about controlling them, it's about symbiosis. He smirked as he patted Raimi on the back as he shook his head. Damn, I thought the sign was supposed to be the superiority on puppets, but here I am, schooling you. As Conqueror got to his feet finally, making her to start to walk off. Thank you. It's been a while since I had a fight with a puppeteer my age, said Conqueror. But Nerd did not turn back, he just kept on walking. The boy had just accepted him as a real puppeteer. What did that mean? Meanwhile, well, that was certainly an interesting development. Wouldn't you say Kazakage don't know? Hiruzen said that bit of amusement in his voice. The Kazakage simply seated his serious finger gripping, a bit too tight in the armrest. Quiet, he said, as he watched as Gara made his way to the arena. His opponent nowhere in sight. So are you ready to give up the disguise now or tomorrow? Asked Sir Dobe, talking like he was talking about the weather, so casual. The guard suddenly tense, Jerry included. Hmm. <laughs> How long have you known, old man? Came a very different voice that was smoother than his stupid tone. Oh please, you're a hundred years too young to fool me this way. Well then, I suppose you're right, Sensei. If this is just a waste of time, then it's time that we begin the real show, shouldn't we? Meanwhile, Genmo was standing right beside the uncontrollable Jinjuliki, as Gara was just looking really unstable right now, and Ino was not here. She did not even show up at all, given what happened in the preliminaries. As Gara became more and more pissed, the center on his feet, such a swirl in a hypnotic movement as his fists were tightening deeply. As Gar started to mutter to himself, like he couldn't get any creepier already. He wished he could just call the match already, but he had to give the girl some time to show up. But he knew that she wouldn't be here, given what happened. As suddenly he blinked, his eyelids started to get rather heavy. What the hell? As he noticed feathers start to fall from the sky, it was a shock of the same man pricking the top of his mouth. That snapped him as he saw chaos start to happen. His eyes widened and realized the invasion that all Joden had been warned about was happening. After Hayati had died, he assumed that something was up, but to see it firsthand, his eyes didn't widen when he realized who he was standing next to. The unstable Jinjul came out wide, open space. As Jenma turned, but Gar seemed to be melting. Even Gar looked confused as hell, as he was soaked from head to toe. Before anything could be said, or rather, 
large, familiar tail smashed into Gara's stomach as he was thrown back violently into the wall and BOOM! Jinma was confused. Then suddenly, Naruto was there. Naruto cracked his neck before looking up at Jinma. I hope you don't mind if I take this one. He was going to be my next opponent anyway, and well, I don't want all that plan to go to waste, right? To be honest, Jinma thought, against a raging Jinjulke, Naruto was their best bet even though the blonde didn't know why. Plus, he brought up a good point, Naruto was preparing a month for this fight. Yeah, sure, say Jinma. As Uremia, slit her right behind Naruto. As Jinma was sure that if Naruto failed or Garuga tore top hand, they would know about it because they were Jinjulkis after all. Meanwhile, Naruto flip as he landed right on Uremia as he started to ride her like a surfboard. As Gara just seemed to come into his senses, he growled as he picked himself up spotting his attacker. The wet, useless sand slopped on the ground around him, quickly replaced by dry one from the arena floor. As Naruto had accounted for that, Gara worries a wall of sand as he prepared for Naruto to fire another water ball at him or something. But Rainia simply shot forward faster than Naruto could run. But she simply flicked her tail towards the sand. As a water exploded from the tip of her tail, the water ripped through the first shield as Gara was forced to put up a second one, making Naruto smirk as he saw Gara's sand became lumpy. So, Rainia water cannon can pierce right through his sand. As Naruto Pinky twitched as the metallic spike turned just an inch as the water became more ferocious and spiked. Gara eyes wide and jet of water sliced right through his defense as he was thrown back and crashed into the wall. The pressurized water pinned him up against it as a small pellet then came. As the water stopped, Gara looked down. The small pellet then glowed. Boom! A massive explosion erupted. Meanwhile, Sasuke frowned as he watched the minute names all moving around. He was confined to his bed just like he had been since he woke up. Everyone refused to tell him what was going on and why everyone was such in a rush. The hanging lights in the room shook as more wounded kept on pouring in. His neck ached and burned for reasons beyond his comprehension and he felt more irritated than ever. Oi, Sasuke says he grabbed the first minute name that run past. Hold on to your sleep. What the hell is going on? It was a young grey haired man. Wearing large glasses, his hair tied back in a ponytail. Sasuke thought that he looked somewhat familiar, but he couldn't place where, as a man smiled at him. It's an invasion, Sasuke gun, from the sand, and the sound if I understand correctly, the boy said. But I may be mistaken, I'm just a humble, made it in after all. An invasion, Sasuke muttered, not noticing the man glanced at his neck. You aren't hurt, are you? Experience any unfortunate pains and side effects or ache? Asked the minute as he leaned closer. What? No, I'm fine, Sasuke said. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been rude. My name is Kabuto. We met before the first task. I should take a look at you right now. If you don't seem to be too hurt, we can free you up from this bed and get you into fighting shape. Okay? Sure. Do it, I guess, said Sasuke, as he wanted to get out there. As Sasuke wasn't paying attention, as he should have noticed that the green on Kabuto's hand became rather depleted and strange. Kuna embedded right near Kabuto's hand forced him to move back. What are you doing to my student, said Kagashi. Is sharing an activate and spinning. Huh? Sasuke was surprised and confused. What do you mean, Hataki san? I was just healing Sasuke here. It's my job, right? Kabuto backed away, his hands raised in front of him, defensively. Takashi was unconvinced. His hands started to glow with a blue hum as he stepped forward. Don't lie to me, I recognize that technique good enough, or this eye of mine does. As Kakashi's hands started to crack with lightning, Something didn't change in Kabuto like someone had simply flicked a switch. As a devious smirk came on his face, Gon was a frightening teen back away from Kakashi. Well, if I was found out by anyone, I'm at least glad it was you. Kakashi of the Sharingan. Shame, and Urchimar Sam was so curious why his curse mark didn't take hold. As Kakashi I narrow. What does Urchimar want in Sasuke? As stray electricity was leaking from Kakashi's hand. Oh, I couldn't pretend to see in my master's mind. But then again, what does Sasuke still offer anyone in Wii? The Sharingan, said Kakashi. Well, yes, that would be what I assume as well. What is he planning, said Kakashi? But a massive explosion went off at that moment as people had to stabilize themselves. As Kabuto grabbed a handful of scalpels and threw them towards Kakashi with pinpoint accuracy, Kakashi simply destroyed them with his hand covered in lightning. As by that time, Kabuto had fled the room. Meanwhile, Naruto coughed as he waved away the black smoke that destroyed the arena wall. No, it was just rubble, a gaping hole. 
as he was slitting on Rainier's back, looking for his opponent that he lost in the blast. He never expected the explosion to be that big. He never knew it would be that destructive when he created that capsule of his. Well, the basic theory of it was to stuff a small metal ball with exploded notes, concentrating your explosion so it will be more massive. Field test, success. Well, I guess he said. As Naruto was looking for Gaara, at that moment, a small tentacle of sand wrapped around his ankle and threw him off of Rhaenya. He was quick to react, there was a finger twitch as Rhaenya fired off the stream of water, cutting right through the sand tentacles. As Naruto saw his opponent, he came coming back through the smoke. But instead of the boy he was just facing, he saw a grinning thing. Half his body was covered in sand, blue veins running across the surface. A massive tail swinging behind him, and one of his arms was created by a thick veil of sand with two claws at the end of it, as half of his face was covered as venom was dripping from his mouth. Well, the side that was covered, as a shuriken was in his eye, and all looked like he was transformed into some kind of monster. A massive jet wad of sand came rushing down as Raimi took the full blunt, as her body was turned into the handlet. Your blood. Mother will feed her a scream as Raimi opened her mouth and spat out the globs that locked up Karasu. Sure enough, it hit the wall of sand and bind it into place, freezing it. As Raimi slashed the block of sand that was now stone, Gara cursed and screamed as the pressurized water ripped into his body. But more sand came over him to replace what was destroyed. Yes, that's it. Show me your strength so I can crush it. As he looked more and more insane, his face was almost replaced by that sandy mass. As Naruto had to dodge a volley of shurikens that were made from sand, as he saw one of them rip right through the concrete wall of the building. Yeah, those were deadly. As he jumped onto Remy's back as he slithered up a nearby wall onto a building. Gar, crazy eyes following the entire way. Gar was about to follow him until the sand in his back then exploded as he cried out in pain. As Gar turned to see a raccoon as she was descending upon him. Her jaw opened wide. As Gar raised his hand and she spat a venom glob. He thought that it was about to freeze up his sand, but it didn't. It started to melt right through it. What the? It's hurting. Mother, it's hurting, he screamed. As the acid started to burn right through his sand defense, going onto his skin. As something seemed to click in Gar's mind. All the sand around him exploded outwards. It pelted a raccoon with small sand bullets in all directions. Thankfully, the spider-like puppet held up well against the onslaught. For that brief instant, though, Gar was completely unshielded as Naruto saw that. A raccoon speed forward her legs, moving rather fast as she appeared right in front of Gara. As she started to rush around him, as she started wrapping her up in a rather thick layer of thread, Gara started to struggle in a wet and sticky thread. As his eyes were the only thing that could be seen after a few seconds, as he was wrapped up in a bundle of spider web. The sand was still swirling all around him, confused how to help his master, as a raccoon bit down into Gara's neck as the sand fell down forcing a powerful set diff right into his bloodstream. As Gara thrust around for a few seconds before, a raccoon grabbed him as he collapsed down. As Nerd released a sigh of relief as he looked around to see Konoha was pushing back the sound in the sand successfully. Suddenly, the ground was cracked open. Nerd quickly had a raccoon move away as sand exploded from it as the sand washed over onto Gara's body. The sand started to grow and grow and grow and grow until it became a monster. What the hell? The thing didn't laugh, cutting through the sounds of the battle that was happening in Konoha. Despite their nation right now, everyone looked up. I'm free, Shikaku yelled, as his tail crashed through many houses like they were just a row of matchsticks. They were reduced to nothing, rubble and sand that was all remain. Who should I kill first, he said, as... The bitch would turn and destroy the building that Naruto was on. Naruto flipped off of it and landed on a raccoon before jumping on Rainier. Hey, I still need this village, you giant. Sandy asshole. It was rare for him to lose his temper, but seeing the creature tearing through his village like that, he lost it. As Rainier's arm then slipped apart, as a metal rod came out of it, as it fired and stabbed right into the beast's shoulder, the canister then erupted, as Shikaku's arm was completely tear right off, collapsing to the ground now, boom. Once again, people looked up in shock and all wonder what the hell that happened. As the bitch itself was shocked as hell. I'll kill you. I'll kill all of you, he roared. As he swing his arm in all directions, flipping away jutsus that Anvus are sending his way. 
The beast ain't something like Aunt Naruto. You. You were the one that did it. I'll kill you, you little bastard. Sand start to go upward, rebuilding the beast's arm rather fast. As Naruto quickly jump out the Arakun as Rainier go off in a different direction. As more parts of the giant Shikaku was blown off by Rainier, firing those rods and the explosions were awaiting them. As Naruto vanished into the shadows of a nearby street, but the beast was only getting faster as time went on as it was healing rather quickly with the sand just going over its body. As Naruto noticed something, Gara was on top. He was right on the forehead of the Biju, but he was unconscious. Naruto decided to take a leap of faith and figure that waking him up might get rid of this beast. As Raimi didn't fire off a jet of water, but that was nothing compared to the massive Shikaku who tanked it like it was nothing. And the seals lining Raimi's tail that had the water in it was now empty. He gets to use more than he thought. He needed to do something big to lower the thing over towards the training ground itself. Something big to distract it. A crazy idea went through his mind. As he called over Ramia, he twitched his finger as two identical compartments opened up in the back of Arakun and Ramia's neck. As Nurtu removed two identical capsules with seals and switched them around. As the Biju took the bait, as it chased after Ramia, as it led it closer to the wall. In the meantime, Nurtu started to gather rubble all around him. As Arakun started to bind the chumps of earth together, as Nurtu started to pick up more and more and more. Meanwhile, Shikaku was pissed as he could not crush this tiny thing that caused him so much pain. Whenever he tried to grab little worm, it spat at him, but it wasn't normal spit, it was acid. As Naruto switched Raimia with Arakun, it was easy to change their compartments. Now, Raimia has the acid. As the sand was burning and bubbling at the acid, all of the people tried to stop him and Shikaku simply just barged right through them, destroying buildings after buildings, trying to crush this stupid worm. As he wondered where that little human had gone, that was the human that sent that worm after him as he turned. He turned to see something rather odd, a boulder. He has seen boulder before but this one was rather large, or was it just close? Why does it look so much like a fist? The thing smashed right into Chicago with terrible force. Half of his face was caved in by the entire boulder. He gargled because half his mouth was ripped off, his face reform as he didn't know what just hit him this thing that was standing right in front of him it looked like the humans but it was far from little it towered over the buildings just like chicago did but not quite as high it wasn't as big as him he was bigger the thing fist then smashed into his face once more as chicago got pissed i'll kill you he said meanwhile nerd grin at the monstrous that he threw together the stones that he mixed great some kind of humanoid well stone monster it wasn't as big as the Shikaku, but it was big enough. The last remains of Arakun's Isif that he mixed to attach his thing together as chakra threads were all over the thing's body that used to control it. But the thing was siphoning off his chakra as he knew why he never decided to build something so big before. As the thing was feeding off of so much of his chakra, he could barely move it after swinging those two fists. It, he had to, he had to, he had to do it. Suddenly, he felt an overwhelming sensation of power that he never felt before. As his chakra's threads became orange, the puppet then moved forward, rumbling and stone falling from his body. As Naruto made his way towards the training area, sweat was building on his brow. He didn't know what that strange power was, but it allowed him to get here in time. The puppet lost one of his arm in the process, but it was able to punch Shikaku a few times. As he was now in the training area, Naruto decided to give it one last push as he threw the thing, jumping back. The entire thing came collapsing on Shikaku with a boom. Shikaku exploded out with sand, blowing the rocks away from him because they were separated now. As Naruto was panting on the ground, Shikaku simply laughed. The thing had finally been destroyed. Shikaku then spotted the small human that was controlling it. You. Raimiya dumped her head into the lake, drinking up all the water. Yeah, me, said Naruto. As Raimiya tail flipped up, as he could still feel this orange chakra as he pumped it into Raimiya. Instead of a normal jet of water, the thing was enormous. The thing pumped and exploded in the 10 seconds that it was active because that's how long it took to drain the entire lake. More than half of Shikaku's body was reduced to a sludge. That included his face as Gara slipped right out of it and started to fall. As he hit Grona, thud. Thank God, said Naruto, as Raina supported him. As Naruto realized that the creature wouldn't reform itself anymore, so he was right. Waking up Gara did stop it. 
as Gara had fallen and broken his leg on contact. As Naruto slowly made his way over towards Gara, fear was creeped up in Gara's eyes. He was scared as he saw the menacing puppet behind Naruto and not to mention Naruto was walking right in front of it. But guys, be in some right here for us next part. If you are not to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn bell notifications, stay posted. But I'm off now. See you guys soon. Peace.